so I'd like to introduce Dr. Nadine Hashash Haram. Um, she's the founder and CEO of Proximy. Um, so Dr. Hashash Haram, BEM, the recipient of the British Empire Medal and the Queen's Birthday Honors for 2018, is an NHS surgeon, lecturer, and clinical entrepreneur. Nady drew her passion for innovation, education, and global surgery to found Proximy, an augmented reality platform aiming to improve access to expert care and to scale clinical expertise. From marking up the patient to providing real-time virtual presence overlaid with content and a rich palette of augmented reality, they aim to provide safe, accessible, and high-quality care to every patient around the world. Nadine has been selected as an Endeavor Entrepreneur, is a member of the Royal College of Surgeons Commission on the Future of Surgery, and faculty at Singularity and Exponential Medicine, is also the clinical lead for innovation at Guy's and St. Thomas Hospital in London. Um, so just a quick description of the, of the section. So Proximy, um, founded by Dr. Hashish Haram, is a secure augmented reality cloud-based platform for virtual surgical collaboration, allowing surgeons and educators to scrub in from wherever they are in the world on extremely low bandwidth using simple, elegant tools. Um, Proximy serves as a powerful innovation to level the playing field for surgical providers and team-based based, uh, team -based training, as well as access to surgical care across all regions. Dr. Hershash Haram will demonstrate this novel technology and share perspectives on how Proximy can be leveraged in different health contexts to improve access to high quality surgical care and education. And so with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and thank you all for, for tuning in. I hope you can see my slides. Um, what I thought I'd do is give you a bit of background and a bit of history about myself and Proximy. And then I'd love to demonstrate through some videos and some um, case studies uh, the value of, of this solution, this technology. First and foremost, and you'll see I'm wearing scrubs, um, I'm a surgeon by training. I trained as a reconstructive plastic surgeon because I was always very passionate about how we restore form and function for patients. I always wanted to think about how I could use my skills to improve their quality of life. And so I moved on that path and, and ended up working in breast and pelvic cancer reconstruction. During my time and perhaps, be, you know, certainly, you know, thrown through my experience having grown up in Beirut in the post-war and kind of wartime, um, I recognized a lot of the inequities in healthcare. And so I got involved in global health from a very early age and was traveling to many different countries um, from medical school onwards. So for about 10 years, was involved in scaling and building capacity and trying to help sustainability in surgical care. I was also involved with companies looking at how they bring new products to the market and how they help empower surgeons with new devices. And I think fundamentally after about a 10 year journey of this, I recognized that the challenges that we have in surgery are very big. And these challenges are around inequity in care, inequity in access and inequity in quality. And I started to think, how could I leverage my understanding of the operating room, my intimate knowledge of that space and the stakeholders involved? as well as this interesting intersection of digital and technology, and think about how we could really disrupt the space and try and find a way to accelerate the skill acquisition and delivery of care to patients all around the world. And so I started to look in, at the literature and started to, to try and really understand what does variation care really mean and, and who, does, who does it serve and who gets affected by it. What's clear is that variation in care is a problem everywhere, not somewhere. It's a problem in the Western world as much as it is in the global South, as much as it is anywhere else. Here in the UK, for example, where I work, we, these are just some of the metrics. You know, you're 14 times more likely to suffer complications in colorectal surgery between one hospital and another. And so these numbers are affecting all of us. And I think it's important to take a step back and just think about surgery. Surgery affects everyone. There was a study that showed that in your lifetime, you're gonna have a multitude of procedures, minor or major. And so it's gonna affect us, it's gonna affect our loved ones. And so we really have to think more seriously about how do we scale and how do we accelerate um, the reduction in variation, the reduction in inequity. This idea that quite simply where you live determines if or how you live has to change. We can no longer accept that. It's unacceptable today that 5 billion people lack access to safe surgery. And the challenge is a global problem. As I said, we have an increasing number of patients that need care and an ineffectiveness of the number of surgeons to deliver that. We have a centralization of services that's happening around the world, which is great from a sense, but it's 
providing, again, further inequity and variation around the peripheral hospitals. And we also know and recognize that we have a lot more knowledge that we have to acquire as surgeons and subspecialties at a pace that's really exponential. And so we need to find more effective ways to scale learning, delivery of care, reduction of variation, quality improvement, um, and ultimately ensuring that every patient gets the best care the first time every time. Perhaps you, you ask yourself why. Why is it that we have these challenges in surgery? You know, we, we know that, you know, 18.6 million people are dying uh, from lack of access to surgery. That's more than, you know, HIV, TB, and malaria combined. We probably need to look at the behavior and the setup of surgery. And if we look to the picture on the left, you know, the genesis of surgery was around communication, collaboration, co-presence. This idea that if we're together, we can really push ourselves and drive expertise. Look, it, it, theoretically, it's a beautiful idea. I mean, this is why a lot of us chose surgery. We love communicating and collaborating in teams. We love working in surgical teams. The challenge is we took that model and we didn't adapt it to the accelerated volume of patients and population. The picture on the right is pre-COVID, of course. It's from a number of years ago. But again, it's demonstrating that we're all sitting in an operating room together, co-present to try and scale that. And I'm sure you'd appreciate that that pictures, you know, there's going to be an introduction of a high amount of variation. It's not conducive to scale, very hard to determine quality or measure quality within that. And I may not be as popular as this surgeon, but I've had at any one time in my operating room around 10 to 15 people as well. And so again, when we think back, it is a problem around access, knowledge and skills. And it is a problem everywhere, not just somewhere. And so when we think about it, we came at this approach thing, what is that intersection of innovation and clinical? Something designed by clinicians for clinicians. So Proxmi is a software platform that combines the best of human expertise with its advanced technologies to enable the exchange of knowledge and to save lives. We provide a software solution that enables you to virtually scrub into any operating room or any clinical setting anywhere in the world to share best practice, to share expertise, to upskill local teams, local healthcare workers, and work on the delivery of care. And as you'll see on this map, Proximy isn't siloed to one part of the world. It is accessible and democratized for the whole world. And we've been delivered in over 40 countries, over 270 hospitals, doing close to 1,000 cases per month, and working with a multitude of device companies and foundations to try and make that difference. We've also anchored everything we do in evidence and have published numerous papers to show that Proximy is equivalent to having someone in the room. Why have we succeeded so far? It's because from day one, we took a global approach. We wanted a solution that was democratized. Proximy is a software solution that can work on any device, phone, tablet, computer, 30-year-old equipment in an operating room, whatever is accessible. And we did that by building a very robust architecture in the cloud that works with ultra low latency on very low bandwidth. Because we recognize that bandwidth ability Bandwidth accessibility is not the same all around the world. We wanted a solution that was agile and rapid that could be deployed in any country within a matter of weeks and that could enable us to bring a global community of participants. Proximy crowdsources expertise from all around the world and we share best practices in that, in that format. And as a surgeon, I can just say the, the thesis behind what we do is that we're moving from a see one, do one, teach one, which is very traditional when it comes to surgery it's siloed, it's disconnected, it's undigitized, to prepare, perform, and perfect. A continuum, a digital experience that connects the dots, whether you're a first-year medical student, whether you're a healthcare worker in the, in, in the local village, whatever role you're playing, you're able to prepare by interacting with other experts that are doing their techniques. You're able to perform with live mentorship and live proctoring, and you're able to perfect, to go back and review, because every case that happens on Proximy is recorded in a HIPAA and GDPR compliant way. And so you're able to build a learning portfolio, a collaborative portfolio, a delivery of care portfolio that, is, that can transcend the, the, the you know, space and time. And so we really see this analogy with sport actually. And Atul Gawande and Caprice Greenberg wrote some great papers around the concept of surgical coaching and the importance of coaching and collaboration. It's something we believe in and it's something we've looked to sport actually to learn from and think about how we can do that in surgery uh, as well. Technology is changing our pursuit. 
It's evolving before our eyes, creating endless possibilities. Just look at the world of sport, the pre-game plan, the post-game review. Every angle, every possibility, every inch. Watched, reviewed, understood, applied. What about the clinical world? At Proximy, we enable clinicians to virtually scrub and collaborate with each other from anywhere in the world. Allowing any clinician to prepare, to perform, and perfect their craft. Pre, during, after. Think of us as your game tape. Start your pursuit today. Plug in Proximy. Connect clinicians. Save lives. And so the applications of Proximy are broad from layering into pre-service training, such as supporting medical schools and nurse training and, and physio training schools to so deploying this as a complement to in-person training and supervision of activities for upskilling, and also as a contributor to surgical care delivery. We're supporting um, centers all around the world to deliver care across multiple sites and to really augment our capability of delivering care to patients across any site in any city in any country. And that means that the lifetime engagement of a user is, 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 is really there. We can see whether you're a first year med student or at the top of your game, you're engaging, you're preparing, you're performing, you're perfecting. And we've demonstrated that we can at least double the care provision in half the time and maintain the quality, which is really important as we start to think about how we scale expertise with a finite number of resources. And so the Proximy solution really con co contains two key components, the Proximy Live, which is an interactive platform you go on your website, www.my.proximy.com, and you're able to join a case. That's a live case that you can join from any device, and you're able to interact and immerse yourself in it. As you'll see, you can put your hand in, and you can gesture and annotate. You can overlay important anatomical images or structures, and you can really drive a very immersive experience. Every single interaction is tagged and stored in a library that we can come back to and review either for feedback, for accreditation, for quality assessment, or just for yourself to go back and see how you did that case and reflect on it and think about how to do the next cases moving forward. And our use cases in a clinical context are, are vast as well, from head and neck to colorectal to robotics, as well as cardiology, orthopedics and plastics. And we've even been supporting wound care in the field as well. And one of the other key components of Proximy is that we can stream up to four views at the same time. So in any environment, we can give you a real situational awareness. Who's the team? How are they working together? How's the scrub tech? Are they supported? Do we need to help them and guide them to the equipment that they're using? What's the imaging and what's the imaging telling us about that particular case as well? And what's really exciting for us is that, again, when we talk about scale, we are global. Proximy has been designed for global use from day one. And you'll see from this map, we've been delivering cases across all these specialties across many parts of the world, from urology to vascular, from the US to Europe, to the Middle East, to South America, to India and APAC, all making impact. It's about human stories. It's about the human lives that we can change and how we can crowdsource all this worldwide expertise to deliver care to patients. And it's been just very empowering for us to be part of that. This next video shows the technology in a bit more use, uh, some of that interactive nature that I described. Um, viewer discretion, there's some clinical images here uh, that I just want to caveat. Ladies and gentlemen, who thought at uh, 9.20 on Friday morning you'd be dialing in to watch uh, a master, an unbelievable surgical robot, patient who's generous to share enough of uh, this case with us and uh, four other stakeholders from around the globe having a total need done. Uh, welcome to 21st century medicine. <laughs> this is crazy. And anything that we can do to improve accuracy obviously will improve the outcome of the patient and that's really what we're focusing on by working to develop these platforms. With proximity. I've been using it um, really heavily um, since May. I was introduced to the technology um, during COVID. And it's just been a 
game changer. I am able to, every time I operate, have another surgeon in the room that can, uh, we can do like a preceptorship. I've had young surgeons who had not uh, done um, even a gastric bypass on their own yet. And so they watched me. I said, look, when you do that, don't pull out the needle like that. Or, um, you know, I told them some tips on what to do to, to succeed. I think this technology works brilliantly. You know, the fact that I can see you perfectly, I can hear you perfectly, and I'm literally in the middle of fracture clinic on an NHS Wi-Fi on my ordinary yeah. laptop. Dr. Desai um, is a neurosurgeon, but he's our endovascular fellow. And he was able to handle this, you know, using this technology. And that's why we think this is extremely important. So for a junior fellow to, to be able to handle a case like this just speaks to how we can really democratize um, good endovascular technique, expertise around the world and help patients around the world. So what's beautiful is the way the surgeons describe the experience. They feel like they're a player on the tennis court and having a coach in the wings. They feel supported. They feel part of a global network of surgeons, a globalized surgery that's beyond time and space and beyond the four walls of any one hospital. This is a, an incredible case of a patient who unfortunately had suffered testicular uh, cancer that metastasized or spread to the vessels in his abdomen. Normally in our hospital, they would have done this with an open procedure to try and remove the cancer, but it was the height of COVID and there was a lot of concern about this patient being in hospital for very long. We knew that by doing it robotically, he would be able to go home within a few days. And so Dr. Archie Fernando reached out to Dr. Jim Porter, who's a world expert on doing this robotically. And they worked together through the case, enabling Mo to get the care he needed he was home three days later, and he was on the news giving his experience with this technology a week after that. And so it's incredible to see how we change the lives of humans and give them the opportunity to have a better quality, a better outcome, and an opportunity for clinicians to work together and to scale their expertise. And Jim described it as being in the control room. He said there was no delay. The audio was perfect. It was as if I was there. Of course, being able to take it to the next level becomes very exciting as well. When you're able to overlay anatomical images and structures, you make it that much more immersive and more interactive. And so we're using this a lot in training and education, anatomical landmarks, structural landmarks that are important to know. And we're, again, pushing the boundaries, bringing in a multitude of inputs, 3D models, 3D DICOM images that we can put in and overlay into the surgical field. So clinicians operating and those remotely involved can also see those. And so there's a lot of exciting potential and innovation that's happening on Proxima's platform today. And we can deploy this across any solution, which is key. As I talked about earlier, we wanna be democratized. Proxima bundles its solution with whatever hardware is required to make this accessible for you. And we can work with off the shelf equipment. We can work with equipment that already exists in your hospital that you've already invested in. And we can therefore scale seamlessly and easily in a very rapid and agile way. And we're making that impact connecting clinicians yes. across many so, hospitals. So your contrast is going up to here. Yes. My concern is that we can't see this area. I don't know if that's because there's stone here, but uh, we cannot. Oh, can you also see this? So here, yeah. here, I think we've got some stone. I think the stone, this area here, right, is the stone. So I think that the sheath has gone a little bit past the stone, which is why we're not seeing it. The stone is sort of behind the sheath. Go back a little bit. So, go back with your scope. Go into. Go in with your scope. Yes, there was a lot of not just that little piece we can see. Okay. Yes, very good. Very good. So Gilles has now placed a second guide wire into the system. And if he now takes out his dilate, I, I'm that, that's fine. Yes, now you're good. I, yeah, I can't quite. OK, let's see here. Aha, uh -huh. so you have some upper pole stall calyx, which is going to make so this was a case that was done between the UK, LA, and Benin, connecting doctors to support the local doctor who was delivering uh, you know, care that's needed, uh, removing kidney stones for a patient. The, all they needed was a laptop and a webcam, 
and they were able to stream this, as you can see, interactive. We were able to see the imaging, we were able to see the clinician himself work with him and provide that situational awareness. And you know, the, the reporter, as she described it, said, what I'm watching now is almost miraculous. Yes. And so that ability to scale in any environment is important to us. Again, this is the UK military, one of our partners. They selected Proxime in a national tender competing with many other blue chip companies. But the reason they chose Proxime was because of its robustness from a security architecture point of view, its scalability, its ease of use, but also its ability to use any hardware off the shelf with ultra low latency. And this is a great way to, for us to support our frontline men and women, and again, deliver scale, scale in austere environments. And we've been very fortunate to have been recognized in so much press for what we're doing. So many human stories about why the impact of these solutions are so critical. And what's important to us is to consistently highlight the champions, the users, the surgeons, the, the nurses, the clinicians that are believers of this future and that are embracing this new digital future, a digital operating room, a connected surgical care that brings us all together and enables us to scale what we need in terms of quality, expertise, and, and, and the delivery. And what we know is that a siloed approach cannot solve a systems problem. I can say this firsthand, having been a surgeon for many years, is that point solutions don't really change the paradigm in an operating room. A connected digital solution that brings together communication, visualization, and the ability to start to derive data and predictive analytics is the future of connecting surgical care. It is the future of unlocking value across the ecosystem and building a resilient and sustainable health system, which is what we all strive for. And it's important for us at Proxime to consistently look at sustainability. From day one, we've been looking at SDGs and how we can start to you know, look at the metrics around those, whether it's around carbon footprint, education, you know, democratization, in improving and enhancing delivery of care and reducing inequalities. My, my, you know, my statement to everyone is, you know, it's never too early to focus and report on these sustainable initiatives. It's part of our DNA and has been from day one. And we would urge many companies to do the same and really think about how we can contribute and benefit from this. And as a final note, I, I like to often leave with a, a story. And, and this, again, is a story of a 55-year-old patient who, unfortunately, over a number of years, had suffered many complications following an abdominal procedure. That complication uh, left her in intensive care on and off for a year or two. She almost died once or twice um, from bleeding. And unfortunately, she had to be fed by tube um, for about a year until everything settled and healed. Once it healed, she was left with a really awful abdominal hernia, which means every time she stood up, coughed, spoke, the bulge would, would, would really, really expand. And that made it difficult for her to live a decent quality of life. And, and as such, again, she was in and out of hospital with that. She reached a point of, of desperation and frustration, and she asked us, if we could connect a world expert from overseas to her local doctor so that they could work together. She trusted her local doctor. She didn't want to leave her family and her support network, but she wanted to have that expert from overseas to get involved and engage. And so we obliged and we invited a global expert to dial into the case and they worked through that case together. The patient went home at day five and by the summer she was wearing a swimsuit, enjoying her life at the beach with her grandchildren and living her life to the fullest. And this patient is my mother. And so I hope from, from this personal story, you'll recognize how much I believe in this technology, how much I truly know the difference it can make. And I've seen it firsthand in my own family. And if I'm happy to put my own mother through this solution, then I'm sure many others should embrace the opportunity and the potential of this technology as well. I wanna thank you very much for the opportunity. It's a real pleasure um, to allow us to share our story with you. We're very interested in, in anyone who wants to get involved, who wants to help us scale, who wants to make impact in their local community. Please do reach out. Um, we'd be delighted to support you. Thank you very much.